Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are in the secret location where I store all of my vehicles. We're gonna talk about maintenance. We're gonna give a garage update. I'm gonna give you a garage tour, show you all of these cars, what's ha been happening over the winter time, because it's July right now, cold in New Zealand. How on earth have I spent $90,000 in the last six months keeping these cars up, running, and in tip-top condition? Let's break it down. Welcome back. Here we are in my secret underground car cave where I store all of the vehicles and this is my office. Um, I thought this particular video would do an update on the garage and just what's been happening over the winter time. Uh, I've done a lot of maintenance on pretty much all of the cars just to sort of get them up to speed. A lot of the cars are new in the last 12 months so They've needed some major work, some of them are minor work, and some of them just made a uh, sort of ongoing protective type work. So I thought it'd be interesting to see what the real costs of running such a fleet of cars actually is, um, and uh, give you some sort of insight, I guess, into the sort of the way I sort of approach it, the way I kind of look after and maintain the cars. But um, let's start, I think, with a quick tour of the actual garage space and um, I think to do that we'll probably grab this little camera here. This is my office setup. You've got a good collection of crazy old Macs, uh, anyone that's interested. Um, that is a Macintosh Plus. You can see a picture of old mate Steve Jobs there with his Macintosh Plus. Um, my first computer that I had university and the very first computer that I learnt to program on which is the Apple IIe. That was back in secondary school days, some old older Macs down here like the old PowerBook 100 and the PowerBook Duos uh, and some other rather quirky stuff like um, the world's arguably the world's first digital camera which Apple and Kodak put together which is the Quick Take and the Apple Power CD. Some old crazy stuff. Um, but this is a car channel so let's stick with that. Let's go out into the garage where the cars are kept. Now, it's a bit of a mess out here at the minute, um, but, and that's because I'm sort of doing a bit of an audit on a lot of the computer gear at the moment. So you can see that the cars are stored in here. Um, two vehicle lifts, which were installed this year. Uh, these are peak lifts made locally, or not made locally, but assembled and installed locally. Fantastic, uh, good for storing, but also not too bad for doing a little bit of basic maintenance while you've got the car up on the, on the lifts as well. So I've got most of the cars here. The one that's missing, of course, is the Ferrari 488, and then the daily drivers like the Tesla, the Mini, the electric Mini, and the XC40 Volvo. So we've got the Mondial, the Coupe S, we've got the Spider that we took around Europe in, got my original R8 V8 manual, Got the new Porsche Carrera 4S, the new old. <laughs> There's a bit of work being done on that guy. Uh, we've got the lovely gated manual V8 original. Absolutely mint, this car. Absolutely mint. Came in from England. Haven't driven it in England. Uh, literally just purchased it from England and brought it over as an example of a, of a perfect condition car. And we've got the electric uh, e-tron GT. Got a collection of uh, old New Zealand number plates down there that my dad has given me. Um, these date right back to, I think the early 1920s for that very first one and the top and then they work their way right down to the current models. Yeah, so this is where all the cars are kept. Um, and I do rotate them out a little bit, so I'll take one of the cars home and then switch them around. But let's talk a little bit about maintenance. All right, so what better place to start than the Audi R8 V10 Spider, the manual car that we drove around Europe um, last year in. It's been back in the country now for seven months maybe, um, and I've done a further, I don't know, a couple of thousand Ks here in New Zealand. There's a few videos of us doing that, so check those out in the links below and in the channel, make sure you follow those. Um, but there have been a few issues with the car once it came back and I've had to sort those out this year. Firstly, when I got the car, straight off the ship the parking aid sensor didn't work it turns out it's a fairly minor kind of fix but um, minor fixes 535 dollars uh, also i wanted to have the car wrapped by avid ppf wrapped um, 
and just completely groomed and completely preserved to protect the paint. Um, so before I did that, I had to do a little bit of paint work around the front bumper. So just, just the parts of the car that quite often get hit with little stone chips and things. So just tidy that up so that when we put the wrap on, it looks as mint as possible. 1561. Then we had the full PPF wrap from Avid, which um, uh, also had a steam clean on the car. So that's seven grand. Uh, rear fog lamp and new set of bolts for underneath so this here had actually cracked this was cracked when i got the car and also i chose to pull all the under tray off and just give it a really good clean underneath the car and at the same time replace all of the little bolts and bolt sets and so on for there um 1497 big big part of that cost was the fog lamp and then probably about three months ago when I was on the trip uh, down to Timaru, which you'll see in the channel, the avid trip on this car, um, the air conditioner, the condensers actually failed in the front. Not uncommon on these cars. You'll remember I had a lot of trouble with the air conditioner when I was in Europe. Um, we put dye in the car, we found there was a slow leak, maybe maybe not related to the, to the problems we had in Europe, but um, $2,668. Later, we had that fixed. Got the car back, pulled the underskirts off to do, do all of the, the bolt cleaning, and when I was doing that cleaning, there was also a small oil leak around the um, oil pump, near the oil pump. Not major, as you can see from these images, nothing huge, but enough to be annoying. Um, I had seen sort of puddle of oil in, in, the, in the plastic. Not an uncommon fault on these cars either. <coughs> Wanted to get it fixed. $3,567. So the grand total for this car, 16828 Let's move on to the blue R8. Okay, the Sprint Blue R8. Now this is a very rare color. In fact, I hadn't seen any other R8s in this color because it wasn't a factory option for the car. I bought this car last year in the UK. And the reason I bought it, it's a manual car. It's 2009. It's done about 25,000 Ks, uh, and it is absolutely mint. It also has um, quite a lot of upgraded options on it, so a lot of carbon, carbon blades, uh, and interior racing bucket seats, and the interior just looks like the day it came out of the factory. So because this is my favorite car, this is a keeper, um, and like I say, one owner in the UK, it's um, an incredibly original example of the car. Nothing has been modified or changed from, from factory, which is great. When I bought the car, I actually purchased a set of Audi passive suspension for the car to switch out the mag rides in the car. Now, there was nothing wrong with the mag rides in this car, but at this age, it's just one of those things that you need to do and you need to be prepared to do. And because I've got other R8s, it's never gonna hurt to have a spare set of suspension. So I've taken out the mag rides um, and I put in Audi Passives, which was a recommendation from Ricky from RE Performance. Again, there's a video an interview with me and Ricky. Um, he's the absolute authority on R8s in the UK, has worked for Audi in the past. I highly recommend you check out that interview and also check out his channel because he's got some amazing content on R8s if you're into them, like I am. So passive suspension, $3,100 New Zealand. Uh, I bought it in the UK. That's, that was the price after I converted it to install them just under $2,000. Um, there was also some tiny little areas of rust. Uh, it's not technically rust, it's sort of corrosion between the aluminium body uh, in the car. There's a few places on these cars, on the first gen original cars, where they were known to get um, this corrosion forming around the, the door corners and things. And so um, that was a, actually a product recall from Audi and they, um, I think they extended the warranty for 10 years for customers to get that repaired. Um, this had not been done, as I said, it was an original car and the paint was original apart from these tiny little specks. So I hunted around and I took the car into auto restorations and they have just worked absolute magic by just um, removing the tiny little spots of corrosion and they, they're, they're sort of, they're the smallest, they're the smallest spots. They're probably about at the largest point four or five millimeters in diameter. Um, three spots they removed and then they just hand airbrushed back into those, um, back into the Sprint Blue paint and you cannot tell that that's been repaired. Um, bringing the car and keeping it original, keeping all the paint on the doors absolutely original. $1,300 to have that respray done. Once that had finished, I wanted to have the whole car 
paint protection film from Avid to preserve the paintwork um, and to protect it from any stone chips. Even though I won't be doing high mileage on this car, just wanted to preserve it. So full PPF wrap on the car and uh, any grooming and stuff that it needed, $7,650. I also had the car up on the hoist myself and just uh, took all the underskirts off and completely cleaned and de-rusted just a few of the bolts under there. One of the things about UK roads, even though it had done a very low mileage, you do tend to get a little bit of corrosion on some of the bolts. Nothing major, nothing to worry about, but I'm a little bit obsessed with keeping these cars perfectly mint, so um, I've given those all a clean and replaced any bolts that were too bad uh, or you know too rusty. So all of that's done. $1,431. Right, let's move on to the grey R8. Okay, so this is a 2008 R8. I guess you can tell that from the number plate. Uh, this car, I've had the longest out of everything in here. Um, and my first Audi R8. Very, very sentimental connection to this car. It's in Daytona grey, oxygen side blades. It's got Mustang brown interior uh, leather work. Um, it came from Singapore, so one owner in Singapore, Dr. Don. I've been trying to track down Dr. Don, but I cannot seem to find him, but I know he was the only owner. Full stamps in the book. And then I've had it in New Zealand and I've done, whew, I must have done about 40,000, 50,000 Ks in the car since I've had it. And um, loved every minute of it. I've done a lot of work over the years in the car, including doing the clutch and so on. And um, it's now in really in the best condition it's probably ever been. Um, it's been, you know, driven well, uh, it's been serviced, etc., etc. But it was time for one of its sort of more major overhaul services and a complete look over. So we did that. I also wanted to spray, um, respray the front bonnet uh, because there's just been a few stone chips on it. This car unfortunately wasn't protected with any paint protection film. So I had to respray the front bonnet, which is now completely mint. Um, and also just around the front skirts and things like that, anywhere there was road rash and stuff like that. So full respray 3699, uh, and then a full service. It was determined it needed new cam cover gaskets. There was a bit of oil leaking into the spark plugs. Um, I don't know, apparently it was only running, wasn't running on, on full spark, so that was done. Um, $3,732. Wow. Uh, anyway, it's sitting there. Uh, that's a total spend of $7,400 on this car. Uh, quite a bit, but um, future classic, maybe. Uh, unfortunately, the value of these cars right now is just sort of sitting quite stagnant. Hasn't really been going anywhere. Um, so I'll probably hold on to the car for a wee bit longer and then ultimately I will sell it. Um, just not sure whether I'm going to sell this one soon or wait. Hard to say. But um, with the R8s discontinuing production this year, um, you know, these sort of cars are going to become more and more sought after. All right, let's move down to this one, the 993. Okay, so I love this car. Um, and it's the newest car in the fleet that you can see. Um, the newest, oldest car. It's a 1997 993 Carrera 4S. Uh, and it's in forest green metallic. It's a New Zealand new car. It's done 75,000 Ks. Um, and it is really in absolutely mint condition. Original paintwork, uh, original everything. And it's been well looked after in New Zealand, but it has been sitting for 15 years in somebody's garage and just not doing anything, sadly. Not getting driven, which these cars are designed to be driven. Otherwise, you know, oil gaskets etc etc all start to seize up so what sort of work has been done on this one um, now when I bought the car I knew there was work to be done and so I discussed that with um, uh, Dan at Southern Specialist Cars we, we negotiated that I would do that work so shock absorbers full set of shocks um, springs suspension sway bars um, that were the major stuff I chose to take the engine out and just check all the seals and, and all the chains and all the belts as well, get those done. And at the same time, get the clutch done because even though the clutch sort of felt okay, I thought I'd get it done. So we got the clutch done as well. And um, it was found that the clutch was actually a bit worn when we pulled it apart. But let's go and have a look at this car in the workshop and see what it looked like.
So, Ron, tell me, tell me what we're looking at here in terms of the slot here. Yeah, like what's um, what's your what's the condition of the whole machine? You've obviously well know these machines inside out. Well, it's one of the better ones I've seen. That's for sure. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very tidy. Yep. Um, so it's New Zealand. It's a New Zealand car with like five it's owners. Had some care and attention by the right people. Yep. Yeah. So. But it definitely needed the clutch. It was down the rivet. Is that right? Mm. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, <coughs> it was feeling. I knew. I knew it was right at the end of the the yeah, drawer. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't as good as it could be. Right. Let's put it that way. Okay. So, yep. Well, but that's just. Kind of yeah. Yes. Yeah. I original green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be original. Yeah. So as I say. They're not under so much pressure, I guess. No. On not. the backs. Well, they're carrying a bit of weight, so the yes. springs work hard, but the shocks maybe not as much. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. A bit more dive in the front, I suppose. Yes. But as you, you know, I mean, you can look under here, and it's pretty. Uh, it's very tidy, isn't it? It's nice and dry everywhere else. Wow. So, um, in the box is good. Yes. Know? So there's nothing coming out of the front of there. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yep. So obviously we cleaned all the powder out of there. Yep. 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 So these run a breather on them as well, so that they cool the clutch. Oh, really? Okay. They yes. Draw the air up into the air cleaner. Yes. And they have oh, that hole there. Yep. And on the other side, they have another hole. Ah, the right. Hole on this side that goes to that pipe and up to the air cleaner. As so the breather. Draw air through there to try wow. and cool it, to take in any dust. Out. And these chains, they, they're not a replaceable part, or do they do they stretch or move over time? Or you get always going to get some. Yes, uh, but, but that's these, in good. These updated style tensioners, they were the ultimate. Right. Uh, you know the ultimate chain tensioner yes. and guides, and it was like they'd been trying different versions for quite a long time. And the last of the year called, they're like, right, we've conquered it. This is what we're going to have. Yep. And then it's like they only made them for another, you know, four or five years after that. And wow. Yeah, well. The electronics fairly reliable in these. Yeah. In these really cars. Have a lot yep. Of trouble. No. Yep. We're not dealing with an Italian car, so no, no, yeah, everything should work. The electrics are, you know, pretty reliable, and yep. Um, it's only if you know someone had something aftermarket or mm. uh, maybe the contacts get really dirty, but I don't think we're going to in this one. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh well. Yeah, so, you know, well, thank you so much for um, well, right. showing me through it. It's yep. you know it's very rare to get to see a car in like in this type of condition mm, yeah. and see it properly. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, looking forward to getting it on the road again. Okay, so the total cost for all of the work done there at the Porsche garage about twenty seven, just over twenty seven thousand um, dollars. Ouch. Uh, I also took it down to Avid to get the whole car cleaned and PPF wrapped, of course, because this one's a keeper, um, $8,400. Um, the car looks absolutely mint and perfect now. So this one has probably had the most spent on it than anything else, $35,478. Remember though, I did negotiate that into the price of buying the car. Um, next up, the Ferrari Mondial. Uh, 1984 Mondial. Um, this car uh, needed its service. That's really all it needed. Uh, it also needed a warrant. Um, I have I've got meticulous paperwork for everything that's been done on this car from when it was new. It, well, not quite when it was new, when it was in New Zealand. Um, and I wanted to maintain and just keep the car absolutely pristine. So I took this down to Auto Restorations who did the full service on the car, all the fluids, belts, that kind of stuff. Um, and I also asked them to take a look at the air conditioner another car with failed air conditioner. Turned out that the air conditioner pump had actually seized, but let's take a look at Jason down at Auto Restorations. We'll do a little bit of a walk around and see exactly what was done on the car. Okay, I forgot this had to come out. So this is, does this normally live under the dash? I'm right under the dash, and that's the motor that was in there that had, um, that had fried. Yeah, yeah. So what's actually happened here? Is it actually? Well, no, just, just noise in the bearing. So I um, managed to right. press the button and get another one in there. Oh, so that's the actual fan that, the fan that, was that you were talking about. Way. You tried yeah. oiling, but it's like, we yeah. need a long-term fix. Yeah, that's right. So it's got a brand new Bosch unit in there now. All right, so what, what did we say is going So you got your new water pump in there. Um, cam belt's there uh, waiting for the new ones to go on there. Um, yep. the air comp pumps out, which is usually up in the top corner there. That's, um, that's where the new one's going to go. Ducks in there. Oh, right. Yeah, so where does this mount, where's the mount of the... Yeah, yeah, it sits... On top of that. Yeah, yeah so right. And always sit down the side of that. Right, and it's, as you said, it's um, it's looking in fairly clean, tidy condition, oh, this one, eh? Yeah, yeah, very, very leak-free, very clean. Yep. Um, 
So it's, it's obviously getting driven and had yep. been driven and yep. that's what we like. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's spaghetti that spaghetti yeah, junction in there. Up, a lot of that's original. Um, really? Yeah, well, I, I do I had wine. heard the the Italian cars they, that's how they look from yeah. factory. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> It's a bit of a squeeze, but you can't. And that's really... a Bosch, like a what's that, a relay, yeah, something well, or other. That's actually the climate controller from. I have to check that part number, but um, yeah. These buttons here. Are... One's like an old transistor radio. You kind of, it's got a click. Is mm. it this one? It's like, um, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's your fan. That one will still work. Your fan yep. speed. That's your temperature select will not work anymore. The way they've wired it up. Right. And this is gen this is actually a vacuum switch that controls the flaps. Gotcha. They've bypassed that as well. Um, ah, so is, that's not doing anything. That's not doing anything technically right now. So it's all hooked in. So will you have a go at reconnecting that up if possible? Yeah, 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 yeah that sounds, sounds great. Oh so wow. We'll, we'll try to all of that first next up and no, a bit that's, over there. no, really good. It's great to see it. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love how the fact there's a cigarette lighter in the back seat for what? What kids? <laughs> kids are going to be smoking yeah, back there. Yeah, all very small <laughs> friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so. Total cost for all of that work, brace, brace for impact, 16738. Um, book stamped, air conditioning is driving, is going absolutely perfect. Took this out for a run the other day with the Ferrari Club Pi Run. It's driving fantastically. The air conditioner is, is actually quite important. It gets really hot in the cabin. Uh, in this part of the time of the winter, it was actually getting a bit cold. So it's a real, I had to got to test out both the heating and the cooling. Um, so that's another job done and really pleased about that. Well, there's another Ferrari that's not here right now, and that is the 488. That has had some work done as well over winter. Uh, nothing major, just a service. Um, it's still covered under the seven-year Ferrari warranty, which we love. So no cost. Get the car serviced. It's in perfect shape. Um, it's been doing a lot of Ks this year. I think it's done, I want to say that's done about 8,000 Ks as well in the last 12 months. Full service. And uh, there was a broken seat lifter nothing major it was, it was actually like it when i got the car so they just they just replaced that for me as well now let's look at the audi hiding underneath here the coupe s hasn't had a lot of driving in the last 12 months only about a thousand k's worth of driving in this car and it was due its warrant so i threw the car up on the hoist to have a look took it for a good run out to akaroa and back had a look under the car and there's a little bit of oil leaking from just underneath the car again um, not to be unexpected from an older car, but remember this car was completely engine out, completely restored by um, fixations last year. And there's a great video of us doing that. And Tim and I walking around the car looking at all the work, amazing work that they've done. Um, Tim and Selene are fantastic down there at our fixations. They are uh, going to um, take a look at this leak, give it another warrant. It's not really going to be a big deal. Um, they'll they'll uh, t cover the costs of getting things sorted um, in terms of the labour sort of side of things and anything extra, which there will be, um, I will cover and I think that's totally reasonable. So that car is um, booked in to go back to them in a few weeks time, but for now it's um, running really, really well and uh, just waiting for some nice fine weather to get out there and drive it. <laughs> okay, time to talk about the e-tron GT. Um, this car is just a little less than two years old, bought it new here in New Zealand, spec'd it, love it, love the car. Love the colour, love the car, but it has not been without a big list of problems. Um, and I'm not the only one that have been having these problems. This is a, a worldwide issue with these cars. Uh, there are all sorts of little teething issues, I guess, that you might get with a generation one car that was built over COVID uh, when supply of items are short, supply of labour is difficult, uh, supply of skilled labour is difficult. And so it's come with its fair share of issues. Um, the car essentially completely bricked itself just before Christmas time. The 12 volt battery had completely died. It's a lithium battery, a special battery. Had to come from Germany, couldn't be flown because it's lithium. Uh, took two months to get the car back to me after that battery finally arrived. Um, at the same time when the car was in there getting an overall check they discovered that the front tyre had completely wore down to the wire, the front left tyre and the front right tyre wasn't all that flash either. Um, Audi tried to charge me for a couple of new tyres, hang on a second, turns out that there's an issue with these cars suspension from factory not being correctly calibrated. The car essentially had been sort of towed out incorrectly causing this premature tyre wear. So they came to the party and replaced new tyres 
fixed the suspension, adjusted the suspension correctly, which apparently is very difficult. Huge amount of weight on this car down to the ground, um, so that'll explain perhaps why Audi aren't quite used to dealing with cars this heavy. Um, while it was in getting serviced, uh, some damage was done to the front um, seat, the leather seat. There was a cut in the seat, so they also repaired that for me. I didn't do that damage, that was done when it was in the workshop. Quite frustrating to be fair, but they did come to the party and get it repaired. Got the car back, not long after having it back, the air conditioning suddenly decides not to run cold. So, I don't know, what is this, the fourth, fifth car with an air conditioning problem, but this is a new car. So back into the shop, turns out it's a common problem. Um, they fix that, uh, which is great. And then about a month ago, the air conditioning switch, temperature switch broke, physical switch, um, just wouldn't push down. Another common problem, back into the shop, new switch gear was replaced. There was also a couple of campaign recall problems on the car as well that had to be fixed at the same time. Um, and right now, uh, I'm actually in talks with Audi to try and understand why I'm not getting anything like the 480 kilometer battery range that's advertised with this car. Um, probably, probably could do a whole different topic on batteries and battery range on electric cars, but this one is nowhere near the advertised range. Uh, and in New Zealand, you really do need to stick to what you say in your ad is what you should be getting. And we're certainly not getting anything like 480 Ks, probably getting closer to 300 Ks range and has, as that's always been the case with the car. So they're gonna look at the battery and see what's going on there. All of these cars, uh, yeah, the surprising grand total of $90,500 in the last uh, six months. It's a lot of money to spend, obviously. Is it all worth it? That's the question. Well, when you spread it out across all the cars and realize that a, a big chunks of this cost are things like paint protection film that are gonna last for years to come, uh, and just large maintenance, things like clutches that for years are going to carry on working for the rest of my life, um, these cars are gonna be in tip-top condition. And that's the main thing. So it's all about you know upkeep, protection, restoration, preservation, and then just ongoing maintenance on the cars. So I like to get a car and then do the work up front, get it done, and then keep track of how that car's progressing a long time to keep it in tip top condition. And I think that's really important. At the end of the day, the question is, you know, all this money you spend on these cars, including the price of the cars, are the cars gonna be worth it? Are the cars gonna depreciate? Are they gonna, you know, hold their value, increase in value? Well, the answer is nobody knows. Nobody knows what will happen. You've got to buy cars because you love them. But I would like to think that these cars are classic, future classic cars. Some of them are already classic cars and they'll continue to hold and increase slowly in value over time. So the money spent now is money well spent, I'd like to think. Um, but I do it because I love cars and you're watching this because you probably love cars too. So I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative. Remember to subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Um, what are your experiences in servicing your cars? Uh, if you've got an Audi R8, and I'm sure some of you do, you know, what have been the, the pros and cons of owning that kind of car? Because uh, it's my favorite, still love them. Uh, they're not going anywhere in a hurry. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.